Hello, and welcome to our Extension Ed Talk. I'm Donna Krug, and I am the Family and Consumer Science Agent in Barton County, so my office is in Great Bend. And today our topic is, When Bigger Isn't Better. I have divided the uh, talk today into three parts, and so I'm starting with a display from K-State Research and Extension that really talks about portion distortion. If we think back uh, 20 years ago in our lifetime and we know that uh, the different foods that we may consume, these are some things that are consumed by a lot of Americans, have really changed the portion size. The first thing I want to call your attention to would be the sodas that we see here on the display. Uh, I can still remember uh, going with my father to uh, the elevator and getting just a little eight ounce soda as a, real, a rare treat. It wasn't something that happened very often. But now we see folks with this size soda or even larger, and we know that when that happens, they're getting a lot of added sugar in their diet. In fact, they've done the math, and we know that it's 165 more calories to have a soda that is um, probably about a 20 ounce soda. And so what that translates, we know that uh, there's a real correlation between what we eat and the amount of um, activity or exercise that we also do. And uh, it, we have to work in the garden for 35 minutes to burn those extra 165 calories. So you might want to think about that before you grab that larger soda, and there may be a better choice. Let's go to the next item. We see a muffin. And we can still remember those uh, muffin tins that were just regular size, but now when we purchase muffins, many times they seem to be about three times larger. In fact, uh, one muffin here was 10, 210 calories, but the new version uh, is uh, 290 more calories than that. And in order to burn off an extra 290 calories, you would need to vacuum for an hour and a half. That would make your house really clean, but I'm not sure that people are really excited about the thought of vacuuming for that length of time. When we think of the popcorn that we might purchase when we uh, attend a movie or a sporting event, uh, there has been a big portion distortion there. Uh, the size we used to get had about 270 calories, but now it seems that we are getting a much larger portion. The, uh, it, it actually is 360 more calories. Um, in order to burn those extra calories, you are going to need to do some water aerobics for an hour and 15 minutes, and that is quite a workout to burn that number of calories. So as you can see, um, what we've changed is, has, has really changed a lot in the 20 years. We'll go to the center panel of the display now, and we'll look at burgers. A few years back, uh, a burger would just, you would be satisfied with a single burger and, and with a, maybe a slice of cheese on it, and that would run right at 333 calories. But now we see a much larger, maybe a double burger or a half pounder, and that is going to definitely add more calories and a lot more fat to your diet. And uh, in or order to make up for those 257 more calories, you would need to lift weights for approximately an hour and a half. And again, that would be quite a workout. Well, pizza is an all-American favorite. Uh, kids especially uh, love pizza, and I think adult kids do too. But uh, uh, when you had to have two slices of a thin crust pepperoni pizza, we're looking at around 500 calories, but now we have all of the specialty pizzas. We have the ones that have stuffed crust and extra cheese and extra this. And when that happens, you jump that up to 850 calories. So once again, how are we going to burn off that extra 350 calories if we have chosen the larger portion? Well, here we are suggesting that you would have to play golf uh, and not be riding in a golf cart. You would need to be walking and carrying your clubs for an hour uh, to burn off that extra 350 calories. The final food that they have chosen to put on this display is a spaghetti lunch or dinner. And uh, we would be, have been satisfied with a plate of uh, the 500 calories of spaghetti, uh, but now the plates have gotten larger and so have the portions. And so we have actually 1,025, so an extra 525 calories. 
And for this to be burnt off and not add extra uh, weight to our bodies, we would need to be cleaning our house for two hours and 35 minutes to burn 525 calories. So as you can see, portions have changed through the years. I have a few little items here on the table to show you. I have a, a baseball, uh, and that would be equivalent to a cup. So if you were having, a, say, a, a starch like a rice or a potato, uh, that, that would represent a cup. So if you think of half of a baseball, that would be half of, of a cup. Uh, a tennis ball is sometimes also correlated with maybe uh, the size of a, a piece of fruit, perhaps, that you might have. Um, this uh, little block of wood is like a little one ounce uh, portion of cheese. And, you know, you think about it when, when you have cheese and crackers, perhaps many, many times you just cut quite a lot, lot larger piece than this. But this would be the equivalent of a piece of cheese. We really encourage people to keep their meat portions, whether it's meat, fish, or poultry, to be the same size as a deck of cards. And so we know that that is another really important consideration, to have um, the uh, portions much closer to uh, this than, than what we are seeing in our, on our American plate. We know uh, that uh, we used to have something called a pyramid, and about six years ago, they developed the My Plate, and we have that here at the base of our uh, display board. And um, a little bit later in the show, I will show you a, a nine-inch plate, but that is the size of plate we should be eating off of. And when we look at a plate of food, you can see on this My Plate display that half of that plate should be filled with fruits and vegetables. And um, actually, as I look at the foods that were shown on the display, we really didn't have a lot of fruits and vegetables uh, in that group. So again, it's not just the size of the portion, but it's also going to be what we're going to be putting on our plate. When we look a little bit further at the rest of the plate, we see a fairly large portion of grains. And then we see um, the dairy products are actually around the edge or at the outside of the uh, plate. And that would just include calcium rich foods. And I'll talk more a little bit about that later, uh, how you can get calcium added to your diet. So when we come back, I have another display from K-State Research and Extension that I will show you that is actually titled, When Bigger Isn't Better. So join me after these messages. Your home's exterior is the best defense against harsh weather conditions. With insulated vinyl siding, energy efficient windows, spray foam insulation, and metal roofing from AquaShield Roofing and Construction, you can protect your home from howling winds and ice cold temperatures. Don't let Mother Nature interfere with the comfort of your home. Call or visit us online today for a free estimate. AquaShield Roofing and Construction. Our team is dedicated to your complete satisfaction. Make a difficult choice an easy one with Cedar View Assisted Living's knowledgeable and caring staff. Your loved one will be professionally taken care of as they transition into their new community. With movies, holiday parties, planned exercises and games, residents will have opportunities every day to enjoy their time at Cedar View. Multiple room styles are available, ensuring a just right fit for your loved one. Come see Cedar View Assisted Living for yourself next to Sternberg Museum. The care you need, the home you want. Norton County Hospital would like to welcome Dr. Greg Serene to the community. Dr. Serene is a board certified surgeon and trained in sports medicine. His practice will focus on knee injuries, joint replacements, and general orthopedics. Dr. Serene has been practicing for over 20 years and looks forward to providing orthopedic care to Norton and the surrounding communities. The Norton County Hospital, dedicated to caring, commitment, and community. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Welcome back to our Extension Ed Talk titled, When Bigger Isn't Better. 
I'm Donna Krug, again from Barton County, and I'm, I'm really excited to share this with you today. This is a display that has been around for a few years, but I think it's just, it bears repeating. I've shared this with a lot of audiences, both young and old, and sometimes it really does make an impression on people. So again, uh, I really appreciate the, the specialists that put this together for us because I think we can learn a lot from it. I want to point out in the middle of the uh, display I have a message that says remember the average person needs around 2,000 calories and 65 grams of fat a day. So that's the good news. We do need some fat in our diet. We want it to be a good quality of fat. Uh, we, we hear a lot about the different omega-3 uh, fats. but. I'm not really going to, going to get into that today, but what I am going to get into is what uh, amount of fat is in some of the real favorite foods that, uh, that are purchased either at the grocery store or at a fast food uh, restaurant. And so what I have besides, beside that um, sign would be test tubes that have little, uh, the amount of fat that 65 grams of fat would look like. So you can see that we do need a certain amount. It helps our joints uh, move a little more easily. It also uh, helps us assimilate and use some of the fat-soluble vitamins that are so important to our overall health and well-being. And so it's just really important that we have a certain amount of fat in our diet. It's when we get too much that we have a problem. So I want to take a look at some of the different choices here. When I've done this uh, at a meeting, I'll uh, ask uh, one of the audience members, well, where would you like to eat today? Would you like pizza or would you like a burger? And we do some just sort of scenarios of what, if you put a meal together, what kind of uh, amount of fat would that meal entail? So let's just assume we're gonna go to a burger place first. And if you chose the burger that, that is shown right here, it is just a single burger, uh, a cheeseburger, has 370 calories, but it does have 18 grams of fat. Now when you order that burger, a lot of times uh, the person standing behind the counter is going to ask you, uh, you're going to maybe order some small fries with that. The small fries would add 10 grams of fat, but you know what their next question is going to be. Would you like to supersize that? And if you do, you're going to jump the, the amount of fat from 10 grams of fat to 29 grams of fat. And so there you've got a cheeseburger with 18 grams of fat, and you could easily, if you are talked into the larger portion of fries, be up almost to 50 grams of fat for just one meal. And uh, that is getting pretty close to what you would have in an average day or should have in an average day. Now, if you started, let me move this out of the way here for a moment. If you started with the double cheeseburger, you are already using all of your fat grams for the day. It actually has 65 grams of fat. But we know that many people do eat these double cheeseburgers, and that is not the only fat they consume in a day. So that's where we come up with uh, some of the issues that we see, some of the obesity issues uh, that are more prevalent in our society today. Also just some of the chronic illnesses, some of the uh, heart disease and the high cholesterol because people on an ongoing day-to-day -day basis are just adding too much fat to their diet. Let's go for another, let's say we're, going, we're hungry for some Mexican food. So here are a couple of choices on this side of the board. Uh, a bean burrito has around 370 calories and just 12 grams of fat. Now that doesn't look very big, maybe not quite satisfying, but even if you had two of those, uh, you would still uh, not be in too bad of a shape. You'd be at about a third of your fat grams for the day. A taco is very similar to that. So if you had a burrito and a taco, you'd have 24 grams of fat. Now I'm gonna jump over to the, th the screen over there. I actually have some nachos. Uh, these would be similar to what you might purchase at a sporting event, uh, maybe at a concession stand. And those nachos add 18 grams of fat to your daily intake. Um, then if you have decided that that's just not satisfying enough, I think I'll start with the nacho, nachos, which is a mucho grande, that would be a, um, a big 
plate of nachos with the sour cream, with the meat and everything added to it, it is actually 82 grams of fat, which you know from what I've shared that that is over the 65 grams that we recommend for one day. There are some ways that you could take a, uh, that mucho grande, those nachos that have so many grams of fat, and make them a little healthier. Uh, one thing would be to ask when they are making it to leave the sour cream off because you will find that certain ingredients like sour cream, uh, added cheese, uh, do add a lot of fat to the, the um, item that you're ordering. Um, the other thing you might do is share it with someone else and that would be a way to bring that amount down. But those are big, uh, pretty impressive. Um, let's look at pizza. We know pizza is very, uh, we talked about that a little bit in the first segment, but again, I've got a slice of medium pizza, nine grams of fat versus the stuffed crust at 25 grams, and that is per slice. So when I visit with kid audiences, it's really interesting because they uh, are always bragging or are telling me how many slices of pizza they like to eat, and sometimes it's three or four. So again, you have to multiply those grams of fat, and you can see that those really add up in a hurry. Let's look at the potato chips in the middle of the screen. We have a mega grab, which is three and a half ounces, has 35 grams of fat. Uh, we have a big grab, which is two and a half ounces, and really that's supposed to be two and a half servings, and that is 25 grams of fat. And then we have baked chips, and the baked chips do have uh, less fat, much less fat, actually only three grams, and from talking with people and, and just my own personal experiences, sometimes maybe a baked chip doesn't have as much satisfaction at first, but the more times that you would have it versus the other kind, you get really used to it, and it's really a great alternative to uh, include a baked chip rather than ones that have so much added fat. Before it's time for our next break, I want to just point out the, the sugar content in sodas. I have some, 60, a, 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 some empty soda uh, containers here. I have a 64-ounce container, and this is the amount of sugar in a 64-ounce uh, container of, of soda. And if you go to the next size, uh, very popular is, would be the 22-ounce, and you see again the number of grams, uh, 18 teaspoons of sugar. Uh, of course, as we get smaller with our servings, then the sugar does go down. So the 12 ounce uh, serving would have 10 teaspoons and then the eight ounce would have six and a half teaspoons. So again, added sugar and fat can really uh, play havoc with our weight and also just with our overall health. So when we come back, I will kind of wrap things up and uh, visit with you a little bit more about what things we can do when we go to special celebrations and also uh, when we are just uh, trying to be healthy. So I'll be back in just a moment. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the next tech directory. The Rusty Tractor in Kensington offers big city dining with a small town feel. The Rusty Tractor features hand cut steaks, burgers, wraps and more, all with generous portions and quality products. The Rusty Tractor is proud to serve the area farming communities and welcomes everyone. Come as you are in your boots and jeans. You'll be right at home. Open daily and conveniently located on Highway 36. For more information, find them on Facebook or for a full menu, visit RustyTractorKensington.com. All Face Funeral Chapel and Smith Center will be here to assist you through a difficult time. Your loved ones will appreciate our large up-to-date facility and fully furnished banquet hall. You can rest assured that we can provide an entire funeral or cremation package, including monuments at a price that are more affordable than other funeral homes. Plan ahead with All Face Funeral Chapel. No matter where life takes you, we can meet you there at any location. Call 785-686-4120 or visit allfacefuneralchapel.com. 
The plumber said there's something wrong with my water. It looks like you have hard water. You need a water softener. Let me show you the options we have. Hey, do you guys deliver salt? We sure do. What about drinking water? We have water coolers and drinking water systems. We even have bottled water. Find us on Facebook and itsbetterwater.com. And remember, it's not in water. Welcome back to our final segment of the Extension Ed Talk, When Bigger Isn't Better. The first segment we talked about the portion distortion that has happened with food choices over the past 20 to 30 years. And then last segment we talked about the display that I have still here uh, titled When Bigger Isn't Better and talked about the, uh, what's happening with all the added fat and added sugar that we're putting into our bodies. So I want to go to a few slides, and the first one we're going to go to talks a little bit about the obesity epidemic that is sweeping our nation. I came across this slide from the uh, Center for Disease Control, and you know, 25 years ago in my extension career, the map looked much different. Uh, we had much lower incidence of, of obesity, and uh, now, sad to say, that Kansas is right in there with all the averages, the orange states, are at 25% or above, in other words, 25% of the population has uh, obesity issues. And we know that 13 states, the states that are colored red, actually have a higher incidence of obesity than Kansas. What I have figured out, along with uh, the people that I've, I've heard these things from, the, these states um, can have some lower uh, poverty and lower economic um, conditions, and so sometimes just getting a getting good, say, um, healthy food is hard for the individual, and so that may be contributing to some of the uh, high incidence of obesity. Then we see a few states that are actually colored yellow on the map, and they are actually uh, the healthiest, I guess, in terms of obesity issues. And so we want to take a look at some of them and say, well, what are they doing differently? Um, I know in Colorado, speaking from experience, there are many bike trails, uh, bike paths everywhere. Uh, there are, uh, would be availability of a lot of um, good uh, organic produce and just great, great produce in general. Uh, so I don't know that they have all the secrets and, I, and they still have issues, but I do think that it is something to consider. We're gonna go to the next slide. And um, this, these next two slides were shared by uh, actually a session that I went to a couple weeks ago at my um, uh, update in Manhattan on, on campus. And a typical day in Kansas may start out with a breakfast. We hope it starts with breakfast because that is the most important meal of the day. But this breakfast looks kind of uh, very similar in color, very tannish brown color. Uh, it looks like there's maybe some whole grain toast and maybe uh, some whole grain granola bar, but there's really no color to this breakfast. And so it needs some fruit, it needs some color, some pretty vitamins to uh, be added to the, um, to the grains that, are, that you're seeing here. If the day would continue, perhaps the lunch meal would be consisting of a sandwich and chips or a hamburger and french fries like we've talked about earlier. And again, you're not seeing a lot of color here. The um, potatoes are, I don't know that we should really call them a, a vegetable because they have been deep fried or they've been, you know, really, they're, they're just not going to provide a lot of nutrients for us. And then the final part of this slide shows some possibilities for choices for an evening meal. And again, we're seeing a lot of the same color, a lot of tan, um, some high fat, uh, looks like cheese maybe in the, um, the uh, dishes on the pizza and very similar color. And so what we're seeing with this slide is that it's just not um, a, a very colorful and, it's, and it doesn't give us the, the vitamins uh, that we are needing. So we're gonna to move to the next slide and show you what a, an atypical day in Kansas might look like. And here you can see the colors are just wonderful. And that primarily comes from an abundance of fruits and vegetables that have been added to the diet. This can start with the morning meal, just as I was saying in that last slide, that you'd wanna include uh, some fruit with that cereal. 
and then uh, maybe a salad at lunchtime or uh, other type of uh, stir fry would be an easy way to include many vegetables. And then as you can see on this slide, the, uh, later in the day you might have a, a portion of meat or uh, either fish or chicken and also a lot of vegetables. And then the, the bowl at the right is a nice bowl of either beans or lentils, a great way to add some uh, high protein choices that are very low in fat. And then I also want to call your attention to the greens above the bowl of soup and that is a great way to add some calcium rich foods to your diet. So we'd really like to see this uh, be your uh, tip more typical day in Kansas. So we're going to move on to the next slide and we will see a couple of words that you may not be familiar with. Uh, energy dense versus nutrient dense choices. Along with these words I have put a couple pictures. I have a slice of apple pie and an apple. And I guess I'm going to just move on and show you that an energy dense food contains a large number of calories in a small serving. So we're looking at the piece of pie here. We know that the pie is very is probably going to be part of a celebration if it's a holiday time or if you've got a special celebration and someone loves pie and wants to share it with, with you. Uh, and we certainly don't want to say you can't have it, but we also know that it is adding a lot of ex extra calories and fat in a small amount of, ser of a serving. A nutrient dense food, on the other hand, contains many nutrients in relationship to the number of calories in a serving. And so again, the, the whole fruit or the whole vegetable has um, a much denser, uh, more of a nutrient dense quality and that's what we want to see. So I want to turn a little bit to the whole, whole idea of when you are invited to a holiday gathering or, or a celebration of any type, what are some things you can do to make it just a little bit healthier? Well, you could take that slice of pie and you could cut it in half or share it with someone and have a smaller portion like we've talked about before. Um, with, you could ask for a piece of cake that doesn't have icing on it because that icing add is almost pure sugar. And so there are ways for you to still enjoy and be part of a celebration or a, a holiday gathering that does center around food so many times, but there are ways that you can do it in a, in a healthier way. I want to uh, have another slide. This is actually the last one that we're going to go to. And there's actually a book that I want to highlight. It's Mindless Eating by Brian Wansink. And um, uh, Brian has four unhealthy extreme food tools. First of all, he says food should not be used as a reward. And we have heard parents say this. If you get an A on a test, you will go out for ice cream. Not a real healthy thing to say. Food can be used as a guilt clean your plate because there are children starving in China or India or wherever. Uh, also food is a punishment. Finish your vegetables or you can't watch TV. And then food as a comfort. Eat this pudding, it will make us feel better. So these are things to try to stay away from just a little bit. And so I'm just going to uh, just hopefully you have gained uh, some valuable information today and uh, this will conclude our Extension Ed Talk, When Bigger Isn't Better. It's been fun to visit with you.